Tommy. It's good to be back. Good to be back, Joy. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about uh, cruising. This is kind of the season where cruises are Europe and Bermuda, Alaska. But we did something, what, we've been cruising together certainly for over 30 years. And we did a real interesting cruise uh, this fall. Yes, we did with your folks. Uh, we touched upon it a little bit on our last show, but uh, uh, a part of the world other than Boston that we hadn't been to before. So it was interesting. It was easy. Uh, you know, the uh, no language barriers, that was kind of nice. Uh, it, it was a great time. It was on the Jewel of the Seas, one of Royal Caribbean ship, and this is uh, maybe our third cruise with my folks on Royal Caribbean, a favorite of our, all of ours. Right. And um, the getting to Boston and yet seeing parts of the uh, world that I had uh, not seen and probably wouldn't in my lifetime. I mean, my mom's 81 and had never been to New Brunswick, which is where her, her father home. was. Yeah, yeah was uh, lived and, and migrate, uh, immigrated to this country. But let's talk a little bit about the itinerary. We sailed out of Boston, two hour flight. You're on the ship um, within, what, a half an hour of the airport. Yep, it's right there. Sailing out of Boston, I love sail outs anyway. Yeah. But sailing out of Boston was gorgeous. We had a beautiful sunset. And right. Because it was, uh, what, mid, late October? Yeah. You know, it was sort of that, that color change kind of an idea. And then our first port was Port port was Portland, Maine. Right. I'd never been in Maine. Yeah. Really charming. Very nice. Very and nice. And what about our lobster fest? You oh, had God. a. a desire to do the perfect lobster roll. Yes. Well, and did you? I do, interestingly enough, the best lobster roll I had was at uh, Boston Airport uh, at Legal Seafood, uh, but they were all great. Uh, I, I like cold shellfish, lobster. I used to, uh, that's in Jamaica, we used to have lobster salad all the time. So uh, yeah, it was, it was wonderful. They even have lobster ice cream there. Uh, oh, how about the bacon ice cream? And they had bacon ice cream too. <laughs> I, I didn't try either one. But you know, there's so you know, the East Coast is so unique um, from a topography standpoint, but also from sort of a history, blue blood, right. you know, um, Martha Stewart, uh, Roosevelt, Rockefeller. Yeah, family. a lot of old money in, in Bar Harbor. And then when you get to Bar Harbor and you go to Acadia National Park, and I think the line was, it should, it's not illegal not to go to Acadia National Park, but it should be. Yeah. And that, I've done a lot of stunning scenery, but I thought that was a gorgeous day. Beautiful, beautiful day. Yeah, the leaves were changing. Uh, and a lot of different topography. Went to the top of the mountain and then down by the ocean. It was beautiful. Yeah, so I'd highly recommend that. And then, of course, that we went to New Brunswick. Yes. That is, um, yeah. It, and talk a little bit about the Bay of um, Fundy. Well, that's when we were there. They were voting on the uh, the new seven natural wonders of the world, and they were uh, kind of campaigning to to get one of the spots, which they didn't. Uh, they're not one of the top. Uh, but they have the biggest title change in the world, uh, as in tides, uh, high tide and low tide. And the river that runs into the bay actually reverses itself when, when the tide comes up. So it's, uh, it's kind of unique, uh, and, uh, but unfortunately, it, not one of the seven natural wonders no, of the world. No, but one of the spots we had been to in the last couple of years got uh, the award. Yeah, well, Iguazu Falls in Argentina was, yeah. and I can I understand why they got it. That's just a real special experience. It is. I mean, that's a trip. I'd like to spend more time in Argentina. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, so, and then we went, of course, and Nova Scotia was a lot more interesting than all of us expected. I mean, of course, we knew about the Titanic, and why don't you right. touch a little bit about that? Well, they, uh, that's where they brought all of the dead. Uh, it was uh, to, into Halifax. and. Uh, so not everyone had the means to, to get the remains back to England or, or wherever uh, the, these people were, were from. So those that, you know, didn't leave Halifax are now in the uh, Fairview Hill uh, Cemetery. Um, uh, in, in Halifax, and there, well, there's actually. Remember our guide with his kilt, and he knew oh, every he's... story about every family. I mean, really, I mean, we were all choked up, and yeah. and seeing, as you said, Tom, how many? Um... There are hundred. There's actually three cemeteries in Halifax that have bodies, and the Fairview one is the one uh, that has 
um, the most, 150. So yet all these gravestones, all with the same date. No, it was really. It, yeah, it was uh, more uh, emotional than I expected. Yeah. But in the guide knew all these little stories about individuals. And talk about our and, Titanic journey. Well, we, this is the 100th anniversary uh, of the Titanic disaster this year. And uh, like I so said, we've kind of, uh, we were in Cobe, Ireland, which was the last uh, port that they left from before the disaster. And then when we did our Q, uh, QE2 trip transatlantically, we sailed right over the exact spot uh, that it went down. And then now, having been to Halifax, we kind of saw the, the end of the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. it was I mean, nothing that we set out to do. It's just, you know, you talk about feeling blessed with the opportunities we've had to travel, and then you realize how much of the, the world and world history you've had a chance well, to Well, it really experience. brings these things to life when, yeah. you, when you see them and experience them. And talk about special things and spiritual things. Let's um, sign out and then come back and talk about Hawaii. I'm, I love the time. Aloha. Aloha. So we'll be back right after this. Nestled in between Holden Reed and Dress Barn at Lansing's Frandor Shopping Center is a place where you can find good food, interesting people, and mainly live entertainment. The Mid Michigan Family Theater is a fantastic place to visit, whether you're just looking for something different to do or maybe in town for a few days. It looks like one of the upcoming plays is The Tale of Snow White, but why don't we head inside and see what they're rehearsing at the moment? Mind telling me where you were when he met his maker? Well, I was, uh, I was in the, the back with um, Dolores. Isn't that right, Dolores? Huh? Yeah, yeah up back, in the, in the back. And Drew and Wanda were near. So that leaves The theater is, is a really a family-oriented kids with some adult participation getting together but it gives kids that first acting experience helps build their confidence things of that nature where is henry who cares the man smells he never fades tonight's rehearsal is in preparation for murder me always an intentionally bad performance during which an actual murder takes place off stage of the mighty oaks that stands henry, tall yeah, upon these yeah. grounds we have outside. a blast doing it uh murder mysteries tend to be fun Plus we have food catered in and the whole work, so it's really a great opportunity for people to, to enjoy and learn more about the theater and help support the kids. The theater's artistic director, Bill Gordon, has a full schedule of shows that takes theater goers all the way to the end of June. After Murder Me Always on March 9th and 10th, be sure to look for The Tale of Snow White from the 16th of March to the 25th and Sarah at Sea from June 15th to the 24th. The theater holds true to its slogan, where there's something dramatic for everyone, by offering affordable memberships with specials for volunteers, and also by allowing people of all ages to audition for the majority of their shows. For any questions you might have about the theater, visit mmft.net. I'm Zachary Pena, and I hope to see you at the Mid-Michigan Family Theater. Hi Tom, I'm sorry to keep dragging you back, but I, I've learned so much listening to you and, and the enthusiasm about that particular trip and the country um, w was just uh, overwhelming. So I'm glad to have you back. But what we really wanted to talk about today is what you did after you left Australia. This is a pretty fascinating type of ticket that Notre Dame provided you. Notre Dame gave us a great opportunity in that when we were in Perth and the program finished, they gave us a ticket on Qantas that we could make as many stops as we want for a very, very low fee as long as we went west to east. And that really allowed us, if we wanted to, to really Just see to the country. Just to continue going east on any Qantas That's right, flight. anywhere that Qantas flew. But I mean, it, north and south was not a part of it. So you could zigzag all over the country, but you had to go west to east. But when you think about so, did you take ends, your while to plan it all out, or did, did you just well, keep jumping around? The flights had to be available. So when we got to the program, even though we had four or five months left, we got a marker out, drew across the map. How many out of where you did flew. this? I went in a group of six, but all six of you were allowed. Yes. Uh, had the time to. Well, we had a little bit of people came that came and went, came, got back with us, but uh, the program as a whole, a lot of people took these opportunities, at least to some degree, and so. As you're going west, or, uh, east, yeah, west to east, you start to think about where the country kind of ends, and you think over on that edge of Sydney. But if you go just a little bit farther to the east, the complete separate nation of New Zealand comes into play. So you got to New Zealand? We got to New Zealand after we finished South our escapades. South or North Island? We went to both, and we took a look at uh, Christchurch. Is actually where we Aren't started. Aren't you glad you saw that before? That, that and must I have feel broken so your heart. Badly. It, broke my, it broke my heart to see yeah. the images of the earthquake there because Christchurch is truthfully 
this old English town at heart. I mean, it, it feels like it's out of the countryside of England um, with a kind of a unique twist thrown in. But the South Island is really absolutely beautiful. You know, you have the glaciers and you have the ice and you have the Southern Alps. Lord of the Rings was filmed there, right? We so actually took a tour. It. Oh, did you? You did the Lord of the Rings the Southern, And it's truthfully out in the middle of, of the Southern Alps, right in the mountains, snow, valleys. So what you saw is what you got, right? Absolutely. You know, they, they did not manipulate it that at all. It's absolutely beautiful. And then you go to the north and there's more people in the north, especially when you get up towards Auckland. And the funniest thing about it is when you're in New Zealand, if, if you've ever been there and if you go, everybody there's an adrenaline junkie. You have to do something silly <laughs> oh, while yeah, you're you there. You have to leap you off have something. To. And or, so we, yeah. went to the, uh, we went to the... Or be the, on some boat where you're going to crash. Absolutely. And, you know, at the last minute... And we went... Uh, I've, I've never really done anything like it in my life, but we went uh, bungee jumping off the Auckland Harbor Bridge, which is mm -hmm. quite tall. And uh, the, the Sky Tower in Auckland. I did the tallest Auckland. bungee jump in South Africa. See, now I'm ready. Oh, I, had to warm I, I will up. never do it again. <laughs> I, I, I just, once was enough for me. How about you? Well, they have the Sky Tower there as well, which is similar to the CN Tower in Toronto. Yeah, and you can really... plunge off of that. They're we did crazy. that. I mean, they have the, yeah, you're right. And they... no, comp no trip would be complete without skydiving. So <laughs> I think my oh parents my thought I'd lost my mind in New Zealand. But <laughs> but in, you didn't lose your life. In so. a country that has five to one sheep to people, you know, you've got to do something. Something exciting, well, I they're suppose. Just, like Australians, they're just like into feeling the alive, key. right? Well, it's it's interesting because they're so close in proximity, but you know, you really can notice the difference when you get there. The Kiwis, culturally. yeah, culturally, yeah. the Kiwis, they don't have that Aboriginal mix. They have that Maori mix there, which is their native culture. And it's a little more like South Pacific kind of. It uh, is, and yeah. it's a lot more accepted than the Aboriginals truly have been in Australia, and that's it creates really a different type of person and. They're similar, but the people themselves, when you get there, it's a very different feel from the people. They're a little bit more focused. They're a little bit more straightforward in getting things done. Um, a little bit more American in that way, actually. And um, when you get to the industrial center in Auckland, it feels more like you know, a business center than, than perhaps some of the urban areas in Australia. So from there, um, uh, because I know I've, I've taken up so much of your time, but I do want to get you back to the U.S. Just kind of give us a quick leap all the way back. Well, Joy, we talked about that 16-plus hour flight yeah. from L.A. to Sydney. Obviously, we were trying to break this up a little bit on the way home. We enjoyed it so much, but we wanted to pick <laughs> it up. So we got to, uh, to New Zealand. But, you know, right in between New Zealand and the United States uh, is Fiji. And Fiji has been in the news, obviously, for some of their problems, but... It truthfully is your South Pacific stereotypical paradise. I mean, it was, we left New Zealand where it was very cold at that time because it was winter there. You get to Fiji and it's. And man, though, I've been in hot. Tahiti. I haven't been in Fiji, but it's, it, you can't really describe to people what it's like to be out in the middle of the Pacific and the mentality of those people. It really is. I mean, they're just like they're isolated. isolated. They're isolated, but they're in paradise. They don't have the economy we have, but they have the natural beauty. They yeah. have what a lot of people want. And so a lot of their industry is based on tourism, and I think that you know they have to rely on that. But it's it's a place you want to go. Yeah, well, and it's a place people escape to. You it know, is. all it the rich and famous an will go to all those great little places that they Absolutely. think no and one can find them. Absolutely, the resorts are beautiful, and they're tailored to that. I mean, it it truly Jacques is. Jacques Cousteau tropical. has a resort in Fiji. Somewhere. Yeah, it, I mean, it's it truly is a tropical getaway, and you know, I mean. It sounds so tough, you know, we're traveling all this way, but it was a nice kind of R&R &R before getting back to our regular lives. In the and then States. you went from Fiji to L.A. How long is that flight? Fiji to L.A. is only about eight or nine. Yeah, it's nothing. not that. I mean, it's like Would half. you make the long flights? Don't these short flights like to L.A. or something? Once, it's like what? I mean, once, am I there already? Once you do the 16 plus of L.A. to Sydney, I'm pretty sure I could go anywhere it in the world and be your fine. Life. Yeah, I mean, it's like you're completely seasoned traveler. Yeah, I mean, New York to L.A. feels like nothing now. Yeah. So, so maybe, Tom, we could get like a group trip together or something. Thing, and maybe you could escort a trip to uh, to uh, Australia. Absolutely, How's that there's, sound? there's so much to see, and yeah. I would go I back in a second. I think you got the second. whole crew interested. Everybody, I'm, I'm ready go. to go right now. Let's <laughs> yeah. pack our bags. I know, you know, and you say to yourself, "I'm going to go back," you know, and then the time starts clicking I away. Hope but so, I but love listen, it Tom, so much. thank you so much for doing this. Thank we'll make you. sure we let you know. If you can let some of your buds know that you traveled with, you can find the show online. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, we'll get a lot of your pictures in. Thank you again. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And we'll be back right after this.
Okay, the blood drive is in a few days. Here's what you need to do to prepare your body for the best donation experience possible. Start stocking up on iron-rich foods like green leafy vegetables, lean meats, nuts, and berries. Here's a list of iron-rich foods that you can eat. Also, avoid fatty foods a day or so before you plan to donate. Be sure to get a good night's sleep before donation day. Drink plenty of non-caffeinated beverages like juice or water before and after you donate. Be sure you eat breakfast, and don't forget about lunch if you plan to donate in the afternoon. Thanks for your help with the life-saving mission of the American Red Cross. You are a hero. Faith, let's talk about one of your personal favorite spots in the world. And if you don't mind sharing with people why it's your personal favorite, Bermuda. Bermuda. I went to school in Bermuda. So not only does it have a personal um, spot in my heart, it has a spot of beauty that I have traveled all over the world, Joy. and. I have yet to find and duplicate the beauty that Bermuda holds. Seriously? Yes. Well, how long were, did, were you there? Was it just one semester, or did you actually live there for a period of time? I lived there for from seventh grade to, to um, well, the eleventh grade, and then when I graduated from the eleventh grade, came back and stateside, graduated from public high school, which was no, a culture okay. shock. Yes. Did you stay through the summers or did you come stay back? I mean, well, summers, how is it that you just, got to Bermuda? Well, to there was, here. there was, um, education was may, very important to my mom and I didn't do well in the, um, traditional um, tradition. Well, it wasn't traditional. It was, um, private, um, schools that had a religious focus and um, I just did better in Bermuda. I'll be darned. So you lived in traditional housing or with lived in relatives or? Distant relatives, a parsonage, um, four young young boys and a wife that and it was I lived in the, all the homes there have a name and so the home I lived in was the Hope House. So tell us what Bermuda has to offer that's unique. Bermuda has the most pristine beaches. Vision this, Joy. Aqua blue water. You can see 20 feet down all of these gorgeous fish. A pink sand beach with the coral reefs that wrap the entire island. Shell is constantly washing and breaking over the coral reefs. So as it washes onto shore, it becomes a fine pink powder. So you have this pink I powder I wondered if that beach. was really true. You know, of it's, course, there is talk about pink beach. Yeah, everybody wants to bring back a little vial of the pink sand. Um, Teddy's Tucker, Teddy Tucker's treasure was discovered off the coast of Bermuda. So there's fabulous diving with shipwrecks and um, treasures to still, be held. Do you still think unearthed treasures? Uh, oh, are absolutely, out there? absolutely. So cruising in, you know, um, I, I think we should speak to the fact that if you decide to go to Bermuda and stay, the season is short in Bermuda because it's further north in the Caribbean. So it's parallel, for instance, to the Carolinas to get right, people a absolutely. sense of maybe what the what the weather is like. So therefore, Bermuda is one of the few Caribbean islands that's high season is summer that's as correct. opposed to winter, correct? Yeah. Having said that, it's very expensive to go to Bermuda. So cruising, oh, and, yes. and talk about, because Bermuda is a unique cruise itinerary because you sail from the East Coast, New York, typically, right? Right. You're using New Jersey? We're using Boston, New Jersey. Okay, so you're sailing for both of those. So you, you sail to Bermuda, which gives you, I think, two days at sea. Is that right? Um, a day and a half, if you will, but yes. Oh, that's all. It's, it's because, a, I mean, everyone loves that first full day at sea anyway. It really just helps to get you acclimated. just get acclimated, exactly. But, but then it stays in Bermuda, so the ship a is your hotel. Exactly. Right? And you come and go. I, I, you know, when I talk to people about cruising to Bermuda, they're like, I can just get off. And I said, you can get off anytime you want and get back on and get back off. And where we dock is in King's Wharf. And it's easy to take the ferry to downtown Hamilton. It's on the south end of the island, so it makes 
getting out and seeing all of the beauty that Bermuda has. Very and just, easy. And just to give people a sense of the value, I just booked a property called Pink Beach. Um, and before tax, it's $700 a night. That, and, and for Bermuda standards, that's a medium priced medium to higher priced property, but it can go up even more. 90% of the hotel properties have a meal plan-esque, and it is very difficult to get to Bermuda by air and stay in one of the hotel properties that are absolutely lovely and beautiful for under three to five thousand dollars. So that's why this is a just such a and you know and it makes a nice I think um, and we've talked about this before multi-generational when you're celebrating I mean when you're doing family trips you either have Absolutely. to do summer or the holidays right right when right. all the kids are out of school so right. uh, Bermuda is really a unique and the golf courses ah, there. the golf courses are fabulous yeah. the golf courses the the perfumes the flowers, the botanical gardens, it's just an amazing destination that I really encourage anybody that hasn't been to Bermuda to go. Yeah, so it's a destination that I think is, is overlooked occasionally by travel agents as well as the public, so I'm glad we have a chance to do that. So if you don't mind, uh, Faith, we're just going to close with our new tradition, and then if you, I'd like to see if I can talk you into coming back and talking about Alaska. Of course. Okay, great. Okay, thanks. If you haven't donated blood before, or it's been a long time since you have donated, please come out. 97% of us will either need blood or know someone who needs blood in our lifetimes. That's almost all of us. Plus, blood is used for premature infants, patients battling cancer, people with sickle cell anemia, as well as many others. Did you know that less than 5% of the eligible population, meaning those that would be good candidates to donate blood, actually do? That's about 95% of people who could donate that aren't doing it. You never know when you or someone you love will need blood. Blood is perishable and only has a shelf life of 42 days. You can donate every 56 days, six times a year. Please come out and donate and give the gift of life. Did you ever wonder how you could go on a cruise for free? Yes, I said the word free. There is an opportunity for you to sail free. And that secret sauce happens when you book a group. A group with Royal Caribbean is eight staterooms or more. For every 16 or eight double occupancy staterooms, you earn a free berth. Yes, that's a word that we use in the cruise industry, birth is bed. So for every 16 guests in your group, you're going to earn a free birth. You can use that as a credit back to everybody in the group. You can use it for a charity. You can also use it to sail free or entice Let's say a Pied Piper, you want to do an exercise group and you have somebody that's just a fabulous exercise coach and you can invite them to come on the cruise and participate in meetings and activities with your friends that are sailing with you. Group travel is something your travel professional is extremely knowledgeable about and I recommend you ask your travel agent the next time you call them, how can I cruise for free?